Today we're talking to Stefan Pretorius, the Chief Technology Officer at WPP, the largest advertising company in the world, about what AI is going to look like in the future of ads. What is AI going to be useful for in the world of advertising? Because I don't think that's something that people think about. Yeah, it's, it, it's an interesting phenomenon, right? Because we, we've been making work using AI techniques, style transfer, GANs, things like that, since 2016. We did a project for ING Bank in the Netherlands called The Next Rembrandt, where we created a fictitious new Rembrandt painting using style transfer, and then actually printed it on a 3D canvas, and it was fantastic. This, 2016, right? I mean, that's seven years ago. Um, and, and ever since, we've been investing heavily in research and you know, innovation around how to use AI in marketing and advertising. Today, the, the time from design to having cars in consumers' hands with EVs is now 18 months. Now, 18 months is not enough time to produce a car, create demand, and have it in consumers' hands. So what we now have to do is we have to create demand without having the product. So our clients send us the, the CAD drawings, the engineering drawings of the cars. We render them in 3D. Um, we create these beautiful moving, you know, sort of films, configurators, all these kind of things. And then we're now using generative AI for the, the backgrounds and, 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 and sets. So we don't have to, you know, um, we don't have to use a kind of a, you know, do a lot of shoots and then import, you know, files, et cetera. So you can now, within a couple of weeks from a car design being signed off, have a, a fully high fidelity, like cinema quality, you know, sort of, you know, video of a car driving through any environment that you want with any configuration of that car, being able to select that in real time and stream it through a gaming network. That's a very industry specific solution, but but the reality is is that for for almost every category, there's something like that. Right. You know? And advertising has always presented this kind of weird simulacrum of reality with like airbrushed and but now we're getting to a place where it, it eventually like why would you use a camera yeah. to make an ad you, you're not going to need to do that yeah. what what is that going to be like like have you thought about like the the strange reality that that's going to create when advertising is completely disconnected from the physical world you're dealing with things that live in a three-dimensional space that are experienced, visualized, and treated in three-dimensional space with lighting and camera angles and substances and surfaces. I mean, it's it's very real. I mean, it's very, it's incredibly tangible, um, you know, even though obviously you can't touch it, but I mean, it's conceptually incredibly tangible. And it uses techniques from the real world, right? I mean, so compression, physics, you know, kind of textures, things. I mean, I mean, the, the amount of time I've spent, you know, working with my team on getting car tire compression right through huh. CG is insane. <laughs> getting dust right with CG, wow. yeah, right? I can imagine. Because it's like... People it, notice, you can feel People it. notice, and it yeah. matters, right? I mean, if the if the tires float, it doesn't look real. Yeah. They have to compress, they yeah. have to, you know, sort of churn up. If it takes too long to slow down when the car's braking, yeah. you know. So you, you see you all know. these like wonderful renders, you know, kind of on, on social media, and you go like, fantastic, now make it move. You know, so it solves business problems like the car configurator problem I, I, I described. But it also creates like entirely new conceptual possibilities. I've been working with Nike for many years, and they 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 just did a campaign this year <clears throat> where the concept was um, they want to celebrate their relationship with Serena Williams. So they said, you know, we've been sponsoring Serena for 25 years, and um, we want to do something that that celebrates our relationship with her. And so this creative team came up with this idea of like, who do you think is the better player, Serena today or Serena at 18? And then someone said, well, why don't we just test it? Why don't we just do it? And I'm like, well, how do you do that? And the guy goes, well, I know this guy who you know, can simulate tennis players into AI agents. And if we take enough footage of Serena at 18 and sort of enough footage of Serena today, we can have effectively two Serenas play against each other and we can see who will win, right? And they did that, right? And then it became, it became a film, it became a whole lot of you know, content, and went into socials, whatever. But it's, you think about that as an idea, right? It's like it's an impossible idea 10 years ago. You can't, you can't simulate that idea. You can't actually test that, right? The whole idea of like a, you know, an AI agent, you know, trained on a playing style of, a, of an athlete at a certain point in their career. I mean, it's like an insane idea. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and it's weird. And we did it. That's what, that's what these techni techniques are starting to, um, to do, right? We, we, we're able to express entirely new, entirely expanded kind of creative concepts.